Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to another episode in this Puppeteer tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can use Bright Data Scraping Browser to scale our Puppeteer script with building bot anti-detection, captcha solving and proxy management. So what is a scrapping browser? Well, a scrapping browser basically is a browser that is hosted on Bright Data Cloud so we are using the browser that Bright Data provides us with, with our Puppeteer script, as you'll see here's an example. So instead of opening a browser in our computer and hosting it in our computer or in our servers, we use a URL here, as you'll see, and this basically communicates with the browser hosted in Bright's Data Cloud environment. Now the upside with using Bright Data scraping browser is that first of all they handle automatically capture solving for you they emulate real user browsers to simulate a human experience they handle cookies they handle automatic registries and ip rotation they handle geolocation and much more as you see so basically whenever you code your puppeteer script you don't have to worry about captchas bot detection geolocation with proxies all that is handled automatically with bright data browser and as you'll see this is the pricing they provide so it starts with 8.4 dollars for every gigabyte with the pay as you go plan but if you know how much your script will scale you can go all the way down to 5.88 dollars Per gigabyte or you can go for enterprise and get your custom pricing they also allow you to pay with aws marketplace which provides some benefits but yeah let's see it in action and see how it works so first of all make sure you sign up using the link down in the description make sure you utilize the free trial and once you sign up you will be on this page right here so click proxies and scraping and we will scroll down and find browser api the scraping browser so we will create a zone now here we are configuring our browser so basically we will give it a name let's say browser let's say puppeteer browser and as you'll see we have a few other options first of all you can put a description and then you have as a first option to enable premium domains and as you'll see it allows you to gain access to a more challenging to unlock websites so if the website you are trying to scrape is in this list right here you should enable this so you can bypass the more advanced bot detection those websites have then we also have uh, the captcha solver so automatically detects and solve captchas ensuring uninterrupted scraping at no extra cost so basically they offer captcha solving for you automatically so anytime a captcha shows in the website it will be automatically solved and then as you will see right here custom headers and cookies so in case you want to pass some cookies that the browser should have by default you can do that here and as you will see i'm currently using the pay as you go package so it will be 10 cents per hour for the session time which is extremely cheap and also the traffic cost is 9.5 dollars per gigabyte so let's click add so this is the link we will use but for now let's click continue and we will copy it in a bit so let me show you around so first of all this is the format you can copy this link has we don't have to worry about that let's go on configuration as you see we have the same options as before but with some extra security settings so you can change your password or add more passwords you can define ips that you want to either allow or block and basically ips are the ips that access this that run the script you are using so if you host it anywhere you can you you can get the ip from your server and put it here also you can specify targets so what domains you want to allow or block from scraping we also have advanced settings we have special ports if you want to enable some special ports again custom headers and cookies and zone usage limit which is quite useful and i quite like they have this because aws for example 
you cannot control how much you can spend which is quite worrying but bright data allows you to set a limit for either a dollar limit or a gigabyte limit which is very nice and you can also choose what action you should do when that limit exceeds you can disable also if you want the browser right here and finally we have the playground if you want to quickly test a script you can run it here as you'll see they give you some examples so i can choose a travel example or an e-commerce example and i can also modify the code if i need to or put my own custom code and i can run it and as you will see we can see live how this works and there you go so as you'll see here's all the data that is scraped that's very nice now let's go on documentation and see some extra features they provide now as you'll see if we go on features first of all we have the capture solver which is nice but we also have geolocation targeting which is very useful if you want to access websites that are restricted based on your location so for example if a website is only accessible in europe you can define your proxy to use the europe region which is very nice or you can specify a specific country as well you can enter the two letter iso code for that country now if you don't know what your iso code is you can just search it so iso code and as you see here it is gr here it is as well in wikipedia so just search your country and you will find it now as you'll see we also have another option if you would like to manually configure the default captcha solver through cdp commands you can do that as well which is very useful so if you know that a captcha will show at a specific step for example in a submission form then you can disable the auto solve and then as you'll see right here captcha.solve you can run this function and solve the captcha manually as you'll see we have an example right here so we can just if we know at this specific step we get a captcha we can just run this and it will solve the captcha for that step specifically as you'll see we also have another feature here a not blocker which is again very useful okay so let's create our own puppeteer script and use this browser so i can show you it in action so we will create a new folder let's name it scraping browser up here let's open terminal in that folder and we'll first run npm init dash y so we can initialize our package and also let's do npm i and as you as you saw in the examples on the code examples we need to use either playwright puppeteer or selenium for this video we'll be using puppeteer so let's copy this and we need to use puppeteer core because we don't need the default puppeteer library since we will be using our own browser so puppeteer core doesn't come with a browser and it's also perfect if you want to host it in a aws lambda environment for example it's better to use puppeteer core since it uses since it's a smaller packet size there we go so let's open it in our code editor let's create an index.js file let's copy this simple example right here and first of all let's replace the authentication so let's go back go to overview and let's copy the username first of all and replace the password as well there we go perfect let's open terminal and run this example so we can make sure it's working fine and as you'll see connecting to browser connected and that's it as you'll see it scraped the example.com html successfully now what i want to do is test that it can bypass the captcha automatically let's replace the target url with google recaptcha demo page and since we know for a fact that the captcha is at this step right here 
after we visit the page it's immediately available we will go back so let's go to cdp functions click custom and find the captcha solver example there we go let's copy this and as you'll see after we go to that page i want to solve the captcha and then take a screenshot so i can see if it was successful there we go that's perfect and so let's run node index.js again and there we go so if we click the screenshot verification success so as you will see it was successful okay so let's click configuration and scroll down and as you will see we can also view live browser session so basically we can open dev tools so to do that as you will see we have an example here okay so let's try to copy this so first of all we will import the executable from child process let's do that right here and then let's copy this script right here to open dev tools and then copy this part of the code and replace browser.newpage with this part and as you'll see this script allows you to open dev tools so okay so as you'll see now we have chrome executable to google chrome but this only works for linux for mac and windows we need to get the google chrome path first of all you must have downloaded google chrome on your computer or your mac but after you do just visit chrome and then dash dash version and then just copy the executable path go back on the code put it here and for every space make sure you put a backslash like so and then we will run node index.js and as you will see it will open devtools right here so we can see exactly what is happening we can see elements console the network tab but as you'll see it was disconnected because the script finished now finally let's see how we will use proxies so as you'll see right here on the overview tab we can go to right here control your proxy by and as you'll see it's very easy right here we scroll down you can specify all of these parameters you can specify the country the state the city zip code asn os carrier os there is a lot of options you can choose for now let's keep it simple let's just choose the country where is it right here i'll put like that and i'll put gr now let's also update the url here so we can visit what is my ip address let's visit this site right here which will reveal our ip and our country so we make sure it's correct and then let's remove this code for now we don't need all of these and just take a screenshot and also re-enable this so let's run the code uh, wrong password i think i did it the wrong way okay so actually this is supposed to go on the username so right here not after the password so let's run it again and there you go so as you'll see it is using a greek proxy we can again change that let's say france for example let's run again and as you will see this time it will use a france proxy and there it goes so as you'll see it's using a france ip but yeah make sure you visit the documentation and also the proxy documentation i have both of the links down in the description so you can see all of the options you can use so yeah that's it for this video i hope you found this useful a big shout out to bright data for sponsoring this video thank you very much and yeah with that said see you in next video